my sister calls me and she says he's stable. I said, okay. So my mind goes back to, pero como, eh? como pasó este, como, 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 como. I finally get to the hospital, man. You've seen those, scene, you've seen those scenes in the movie when you, when you're coming around the corner and everybody's just standing there. And they got that look on their face. Yeah. I was like, something, Man. something doesn't feel right. Everybody was with their head lows, and I'm like, pues por qué están así todos? Like, en mi mente está, pues creo que, es, que estén sonriendo, ¿me entiendes? I want everybody to be happy. I, I want everybody to have a positive vibe, but it wasn't like that, bro. I play that in my head, slow mm. motion. You have to. And they said, you're the father. And I said, yes. They opened those doors. And there's just, just white and white everywhere. Y allá están en una esquina. Y lo tienen tapado. And they're, they're like working on him. And the doctors, the doctor's not even there. The nurse says, he's, she starts bringing out his chart. And she says, he's got some severe damage. And, mm. and this happened. And this happened. And, and I'm just trying, like, is he okay? And she doesn't want to say, she doesn't want to tell me anything. She goes, it's best that you speak to the doctor, to the neurologist, to the neurosurgeon, whatever. And then um, the neurosurgeon gets in there and he says, we did all we can do. And um, he said something about something. Pray for the best expect the worst, expect the worst, pray for the best or something. There's, he said some saying like that. Uh -huh. Prepare for the worst or I don't remember. Pray for the best. Something like that. He said he's not going to, he's he has about 24 hours to live and he has about a 5, 10 chance, percent chance of living. Wow. That's crazy, bro. It is, bro. And I said, so what are you telling me? Yes. It, it doesn't look very good for him. He's got about 20 hour, 24 hours to live. Me caí de rodillas. Así como una, como si fuera una madre, ¿verdad? Pero fue más, fue más dolor de, de un padre. Cuando alguien te dice que tu hijo tiene 24 horas para vivir, te aseguro que... Forget about it, bro. Te aseguro que cualquier persona se va a caer de rodillas. Damn right. Y le dije, I go, please, tell me there's something you can do. Whatever it takes. I go, please, I go, tell me. Tell me there's something you can do. And he said, no. He was like, he goes, well, we can do this, this, and this. He goes, but he's going to have a very poor quality of life. And he used some other words that I'm not going to repeat here or anywhere, ever, that I felt were a little bit harsh. But, but they're doctors. Yeah. And that's their terminology. That's the way they speak. And they got to be real with you, man. He was being super real with me, bro. You got to be real. Right. So, um. I said, okay. He goes, we would have to do this surgery and we would have to let his brain come out of there because it was already cracked and you need to let the, the, the brain swell and, uh, and uh, swell in order for it to heal. He goes, but these are the consequences and this is, what, this is what's going to happen. And I said, okay. I, I don't care. Do what you got to do, whatever it takes. So then... I thought to myself, man, I hadn't had the feeling of wanting to die since I was like 19 years old when they broke my heart for the very first time. I wanted to die, bro. I attempted. I was in, I was in Valley back, the same hospital, I was in the same hospital, and I remember they pumped my stomach with charcoal. And they stitched me up because I was all cut up from my chest because I had tried committing suicide. 
And I remember my mom walked in there. She said, bueno, la vida, el amor que yo te doy no es suficiente para que quieras vivir. Bro, that changed my life forever. Mm. It was, it was, it was life-changing. But in that dark moment, when that happened, 